freaks. Wouldn't it be funny if I start all my videos like this now? Yeah? No? Okay. Today, I'm going to make some more push sticks. Now, I already launched the Octo Push, and sales have been lagging. And I don't know, maybe I'm not connecting right, but it was a prototype product. I'm still testing it, and I just had some ideas of how to improve it some. So I've come up with the Octo Push to Extreme, a modification for extreme use on table saws. Let me try to explain my previous design because I had some questions about this. Uh, my number one question was why the angle of the handle is so tilted downwards towards the blade. People have this inclination to think that the handle should be like up here, more vertical, and keeping your hand farther away from the blade. This design is actually not intended to maximize the distance between the blade and your hand. It's designed to maximize control of the workpiece as you're feeding it through. So that doesn't necessarily mean getting your hand as far away as possible because in order to maintain control, you need to be able to make maneuvers, okay? So my rule of thumb is three inches. Okay, left or right of the blade or above the blade, I'm comfortable working within a tolerance of three inches. And that's my general rule. So if I'm making a rip that's two and a half, I use the push stick. If it's three or more, I, I can feed it with my hand, and I'm comfortable with that. So <laughs> that's the rule of thumb I use. Maybe it won't work for everybody. Maybe six inches is like how you're going to start until you develop the coordination to get your hand closer to, to the blade and you're still be comfortable. Um, but the, the design of this is actually quite small, it's compact, it's designed to maximize control and not distance away from the blade. Okay, This, this is sitting on top of the workpiece. Okay, so you don't, you don't need to have the blade coming up more than an inch above the workpiece. So you've, you've got your three inches here at all times, even if the, the workpiece is really thick. It's an ergonomic design, so that, that works with, you know, the angle of your arm as you're feeding it through. And that automatically applies force down here to keep all these feet contacting the workpiece and applying pressure to the workpiece against the table saw surface. Okay, because you, you don't want your workpiece to be vibrating, because sometimes you get vibration, you know, and in, in when you're feeding it through the saw. Okay, so applying pressure here is going to eliminate that vibration, eliminate that possibility of that workpiece kicking around, and that's what could lead to kickback. Everybody's afraid of kickback, and people seem to have some misconceptions about what causes kickback or what leads to it, and, you know, in my opinion, it's not keeping ample pressure down when things start shifting around because sometimes you're going to have problems you know you're going to have dimensional changes as you're cutting the wood and sometimes that can put forces on the blade and it's somewhat unpredictable what the wood is going to do as you're cutting it some cuts are going to go in nice and clean some are going to bind and put pressure against the table saw blade okay if that happens you want to make sure that you have as much force down on the workpiece as possible Okay, because if you if you if you don't have if you only have pressure here, this back edge is allowed to kick around, and that instability could catch into the blade and lead to kick kickback. Okay, so the design of the angle, the low angle of the handle, is primarily to eliminate kickback by maximizing the pressure here of the rubber feet against the workpiece. If you're, if you're pushing it up like this, you, ha you have to apply force with your wrist in this direction in order to apply force here. And I'll tell you right now, if you're making 500 table saw cuts all day long, that's going to destroy uh, the tendons in your wrist. Okay, And I actually have bad wrists. My, my left wrist is kind of messed up, 
and I have some, some tendonitis going on there that has never really healed. So I got to be careful what I do with my wrists. And this type of design is, is really required for that because I, I wouldn't be able to operate the table saw with the handle in this position. It, it just would put too much strain on, on those tendons in here. So that's another reason and that's you know, important to consider. Another thing I like about my design is I can actually use it in an angle, which, which sometimes comes, becomes very handy. You know, if I have to just give myself a little bit more room uh, away from the blade, if, I, if, it's a, if it's a tight cut, I can just kind of feed it at an angle, and it works just as good. If it didn't have these rubber feet on it, I, I can't do it that way. It doesn't work as good without the rubber feet. So, <clears throat> that was one thing I found that I liked about this. And I, I do like the grips still. It makes it a lot easier to pick up off the table saw surface. Because these, these grips give quite a little bit of traction. It gives, gives my fingers something to get under there. I've been testing this OctoPush original design for a few months now. So I've used it quite a bit. And overall I really like it. it it's been performing really good. It's been performing a lot better than my old design, which is basically the same thing without the rubber feet. Now they, they haven't really been wearing out as far as I can see. Maybe this front tire, just a little bit, has shown some wear. That was one of the things I was worried about. I didn't know if this rubber would just kind of wear off like an eraser after some time. But they seem to be durable enough that they, these should last a while. But I did find myself doing this a lot to you know, move pieces out of the way from the blade. I was using this front corner of the bumper to do some like, you know, delicate maneuvering. So I figured maybe I could add a feature to this design to make that better. And I also found myself using the push stick like this mid-panel. It's intended to be used at the end so you have this you know, 90 degree stop at the end that takes all the driving force to feed the workpiece. But sometimes I need to go mid-panel um, just because I'm doing a long rip and I need to apply some pressure and some feed pressure at the same time. I need to go mid-panel with the push stick. And it doesn't work as well because I only get traction on this front foot and then the wood surface is the other point of contact here. So all these rubber feet in the middle are not getting any traction. Uh, it still works, but it's a little bit sloppy. It, you know, I can't get as much traction as I can if all the feet are contacting. So I figured, hey, why don't we just put a rubber foot here and here and see if, you know, that would work. So, so I did two modifications. I'm going to change the orientation of this top bumper, put a little angle on it, and I'm going to add two bumpers at the end to be the stop. So... I'm going to have ten, 10 bumpers on there instead of 8, so it's no longer going to be called the Octopush, I guess, because it has 10 bumpers, but whatever. So here's my design, the Octo Push to Extreme. So it's got the angled bumper on the front, and then two bumpers that are fixed in. And they're sticking out slightly for the stop to feed the workpiece. So it's basically the same design. I shortened the handle just a little bit. I found that this this handle was just maybe a little bit longer than it needed to be. So I shortened the handle about a half inch. Everything else is pretty much the same. But this is just a prototype. I haven't built this yet. So I'm just going to test this design. And I'm also going to build this version of my Octopush push stick. I'm going to do two push sticks in this video. I'm going to do my Octo Push to Extreme for table saw use only. And then I'm going to make the jointer Octo Push, which is going to be specifically just for the jointer.
So anyway, so this this is piece A. So this this dimension here on the width is the 29 60 fourths of an inch. And then piece, piece B is just this little tiny strip. And then I'm going to get that out of this piece. And I left it thick, so I'm going to cut it there and then I'll, I'll remove this part of the thickness later after I drill it. So that's piece B. And I, I can get two out of each one of these pieces, so I'm going to make two push sticks. So I'll get two, two A's out of this piece and then I'll get two little pieces out of that strip right there. So PC is going to be this little kind of bridge right here that's going to go in between these two bumpers. So that's just going to be permanently fixed in there to make this rubber part more rigid so that I can apply more force there and I'll have a stop lock right here to kind of back that up so I don't shear the screws off if I push too hard. Um, but that's just a little tiny piece that I'm going to make out of 5 8 inch stock, which is right here. So I'm just going to drill some holes in that and then trim it to size. And then this piece right here is going to be used for my joiner octopush. And that's going to work with my old templates. This, so this is template C, my drill guide, and that's going to make the two two strips of rubber feet to make the joiner push stick. So these are all the hardwood strips I'm going to need. Now I'm ready to mark out my holes, get my drill press set up, and uh, yeah, fucking push sticks. So I know it's a lot of extra work to make this new push stick design. So I'm anxious to test it out to see if all this extra effort is worth it. So, but that's what you got to do when you're experimenting and trying new things. If it's a product that really makes table saw use safer, then I would say any extra effort is worth it. So, and that's just uh, what you got to do when you're pushing it to the extreme.
okay, so my push sticks are now complete. This is my Jointer Pro push stick with the double row. This is the Octo Push to Extreme. Can't wait to try this out. So I've got grips to sell with my push sticks. And I have two sizes, I have large and small. So I also made these extra thin push sticks with template B. And I'll be using these in a future video to demonstrate a jig that I'm working on for thin rips. So I make thin rips out of these thin push sticks. And I sell these grips that are slightly smaller so they fit the same pattern but they're slightly smaller to fit around the thinner handle. And then these large grips fit on the three quarter inch thick handle. So I'll put those on just to demonstrate. So having these smaller grips on the thin push sticks is really helpful because these are actually very difficult to pick up because I only have this quarter inch thickness to grab onto. So it's kind of a pain in the neck to pick these up every time they're flat on the surface and there's the potential hazard of dropping it once you pick it up and sometimes you can drop it on the blade. So having the grip here makes it a lot easier to pick up and put down. So it's just a very simple thing that really adds to the practicality of the product. And, and plus this thin handle is actually kind of uncomfortable in the hand. If I grip that tight it's kind of painful. But the, the grip really makes it a lot more secure. I can grip it tighter and firmer. Okay, so that wraps up this video. I'm not going to do any product testing. I'll just be using these in my upcoming projects. So I'll be testing these as I work, see how they hold up in different applications for different sized parts and different kinds of cuts. And I'll be selling these products on eBay so you can buy my OctoPush push stick kits. So I'll be including a plan to make this version with my kits. And they already have enough bumpers. I actually have extra bumpers that I sell with the kits. So you can actually make both of these push sticks with one kit. And the deluxe kit comes with the grips, with two large grips. And then the small grips have to be ordered separately. Uh, so, look for that on eBay. Phew. Phew. Sure.